Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the third Auk Scout workshop of the new program year. Auk Scout is the Coast Guard Auxiliary Sea Scout Youth Development Program. Throughout the coming months, we'll be offering online workshops on a variety of subjects focused on boating safety, leadership development, and the Sea Scout program. Tonight's presenter is H. William Smith, known to friends as Bill. Bill is the Auxiliary's Auk Scout Marketing and Social Media Branch Chief is a Coast Guard Certified Public Affairs Specialist. His professional qualifications include serving as a national marketing consultant, journalist, and web designer. His professional training includes technical uh, theater design and journalism. His extensive public affairs experience includes having served as the editor of the Navigator, Navigator Express publication. Tonight's topic is Auk Scout marketing and social media. We've muted your microphones to make it easier for everyone to hear. If you have a question, uh, either tap, uh, type them in the chat box, or if it's something you'd like to ask right then, please go ahead and unmute yourself uh, so that we can hear you. So without any further ado, let's welcome Bill Smith. Good evening, everybody. And uh, welcome to the wonderful world of marketing and social media. I'm going to start with a story. The story is very short. It involves a gentleman by the name of Bill Knowles, who was the ABC White House Bureau or Washington Bureau Chief, was a mentor of mine and also uh, taught me at the University of Montana. Bill started his intro to basically journalism course with one thought, and that is this, that it's all about the story. And that if the story doesn't work, it doesn't matter how pretty it is, how technically proficient it is. If people don't listen, and if people aren't captured in some way by that story, you won't accomplish your mission. And that's kind of how I have a tendency to look at marketing and social media is through the, um, the lens of storytelling. Now, we're going to talk tonight about some of the tools that we have available to us and some of the tricks I've learned over the years. And um, also what I, what I hope, because there, you know, we have these often where we all sit and we listen and at the end, we have two or three questions, and, and then we all go about our lives. Hopefully, we can get a dialogue going, because I don't have all the answers. I will tell you that right up front. Um, this medium of marketing and social media is changing so rapidly. How many, I, I won't ask for a show of hands, but I can imagine two or three years ago, at, at least, and maybe even a year ago, very few of us had done much with Zoom. Now Zoom is how we so often communicate in any group setting that's larger than one or two people. Well, in marketing, of course, we're trying to get to the most people in the simplest and in, in traditional marketing, most cost-effective way. And Social media, the advent of social media turned an awful lot of that on its head because frankly, we could do it for free. It started with things like Facebook. It started with, um, oh, going back to some of the different platforms that now seem old and antiquated, but, but were the stepping stones to get to where we are now. Now, an awful lot of us deal with social media and marketing all the time. I was looking tonight, there's a, a new film by Tom Hanks that is going to Netflix first. Films are not being released in theaters. They're being released on Netflix, which means that we access them essentially through our, the internet, our computers, and our televisions, which are now essentially computers with a great big monitor. So how do we, and, and I, I will forgive me for saying this, but I think there, 
are a few of us in the auxiliary in particular who are say past, um, past 21 years old. Let's just be gentle. In other words, we ain't as young as we used to be. Some of us are more technically savvy than others, but I can guarantee you that our Sea Scouts are more technically savvy than a majority of us, including myself. My experience goes back into, well, it goes back to 1969, a junior achievement television company when the television or the cameras were about the size of a house and you blasted everything with white light. To now, if you see this picture on the screen, this was me doing an interview for the local television station for National Safe Boating Week several years ago. And I took my, my, my cell phone and I knew the cameraman. I said, hey, listen, take a shot of me while I'm doing this, will you? And that quickly, I had this shot. It didn't get in his way at all. It took him two seconds to do. And that tool of the cell phone, which is something we're gonna talk about quite a bit because that's the one tool we all carry with us. Bruce, could you go to the next slide, please? And the goal, the goal um, is to explain this relationship that is so new to many of us and yet so exciting to a wider audience and, and we may not even know how wide that audience is yet. When I got asked to, to uh, kind of come out of not retirement, but I'd step back from editing the Navigator Express and the Navigator just to kind of take some time to do some other things that I was involved with in my life. And uh, Randy Ventress, I made the mistake of saying to Randy, who uh, was one of the uh, Vice National Commodores, that I was a little bit bored and I needed something to do. Next thing I knew, Bruce called. And I knew nothing other than I knew it had happened and I had had some approaches about articles for Ox Scout, but really we had frankly stayed away from it to, to see how it went and see how it developed. The next thing I know, Bruce is asking me to help market it. I knew nothing as far as the detail. Luckily, and I will say this up front, Bruce, in his preparatory work and the work of a lot of people before me have given us a ton of tools to work with, more so than anywhere else I have found in auxiliary social media and marketing. So we have tools. Uh, the idea is to encourage in, interested in individuals to A, become a part of the community and B, speak favorably about us as they talk to others. It's a complex mission and a complex uh, set of constructs that we have in that we are dealing with people who could be 80 years old down to 14 and the entire spectrum across the country. That being said, there are some things that are universal. Again, getting back to messaging, as I got involved in this, I realized that this is really an interesting story. And it really is a, I think, wise choice on the part of the auxiliary and the Coast Guard in involving people. We've been trying to recruit and figure out ways to recruit for years now. We all know that if we don't, our organizations are really gonna be challenged. So why not market to people who are already interested, A, in the water, B, they know how to put on a uniform. C, they know how to take direction. D, they have a moral compass that makes it easier to include them. And we have this wonderful opportunity to maybe see someone who's 15, 14 years old gets involved in Sea Scouts, who could at some point through the processes, through learning, through being brought along, through being mentored, end up either an enlisted uh, member of the Coast Guard itself or at the academy. And I believe, 
if Arne Geller's out there, he has an example, and we're going to probably be trying to do a story on this, of an individual who's come through the ranks and is at the academy. That seems to me as one of the best reasons to do what we are doing. The other is that this is just a good story. And that is something that hopefully as we go forward, we'll, we'll obtain greater skills, we'll get to know each other, and we'll go about our jobs of telling the rest of the world about Ox Scout. If you could give me the next slide, please. One of the things that, you know, years ago we had much fewer, many fewer tools, but the tools in marketing are always changing and they always have going, going back as far as you want to go to the printed word. Uh, it started out with a printing press, Gutenberg, and it has now to where when we carry our cell phones, if, if we have a smartphone, we are carrying something that could have landed the Apollo mission on the moon. It has that kind of computing power and more. That's, that can be scary, but it also is a tremendous tool. I remember when the auxiliary wouldn't allow us to use photos from our cell phones in publications. Um, and then all of a sudden our cell phones start taking as good of pictures as many of the cameras we carry. The other thing is our cell phone is always with us in most instances. What I have found as a frustration is getting people to take pictures. And we'll talk a little bit about that, but as we go forward, you're always gonna hear me ask you if you communicate with me, well, did you take any pictures? Often the answer is no, I forgot to. It's a discipline. And the discipline is, okay, I'm in, in an organ or a meeting, I'm in what we call grip and grins, where awards are being presented, just step back and take a picture. Now, I know that there are certain issues as far as taking pictures of young people, and we can address those, and there are some tricks to that. The, the, the way I want to go forward with this is you read the slides, I'm going to just basically um, kind of talk and, and I'll pick some stuff out of them. But one of the things we've got, and again, I want to get to is you, if you have a question or if you have an issue, let's talk about it. Let's communicate. So if you do, raise your hand. I'm sure Bruce will, will um, be monitoring that. I'm not seeing the questions as they appear. So Bruce, if you can take care of that and um, kind of guide me through this. This is the first of these types of things that I've done in this format. Let's talk a little bit about tra traditional marketing, print, radio, television, and the all important one, word of mouth. I don't know how many of you have been contacted through social media and the internet by lawyers regarding the Boy Scout uh, bankruptcy. We all know that that's an issue out there. How we address it is complex, but really the best way I think right now is to let that kind of play through and just do our jobs. Social media is where word of mouth can be electronic and it can be a tremendous help. It can also be tremendously damaging and extremely hard to control. Next slide, please. There are some of the, and there's, there are, there are many more different print media elements, newspapers, which are less and less, sadly, less and less uh, prevalent in our communities, magazines, newsletters, which are very, you know, they're topical. Usually they're fairly short. One pagers can be basically your 10 second um, elevator pitch on a piece of paper. Handbills are basic advertising tools that have been used as long as people have been able to paste them on walls, brochures, posters, and any other printed materials that you can come up with that support the mission. 
The one thing about them is almost all of them have cost. And if I'm not mistaken, not all, not all of us have a lot of money to spend on them. But they are a component and they will be a component, I am sure, through a majority of our lifetimes in one form or another. Uh, Bruce, if, you, if you'd like to go to the next slide, please. Radio is, is something, one thing that it, I wanna talk about is that, and I don't know if a lot of people realize this, that in all of media, the FCC and different governmental uh, apparatuses require a public service component in all commercial radio, television, and I, I, film is, is, a, is a different animal and we're, we're not gonna talk much about film, but it's useful to us because we can put together a public service announcement. We had a fella on 8th Eastern who was an old radio announcer. And one year for, um, National Safe Boating Week, he put together about five or six different spots that addressed our different rivers. We're brown water Coast Guard in 8th Eastern in that we have the Ohio, the Mississippi, the Cumberland, and the Tennessee, and then we have lakes. Many of those lakes though are not co covered by the uh, Coast Guard, including several in my area. Some are, but the radio can reach everyone. And if you go usually, to the radio, your local radio stations. And the key to this is get to know the people who are the gatekeepers. Who are the people who can get your, if you walked in with a cart, in other words, a recording of a public service announcement, that they will put it in their rotation so that it gets heard. The other thing is, you know, radio news is something that it, it's, it's, it's not as prevalent as it used to be, but it still exists. And news is, is something that because of its nature and its short health or half-life, they're always looking for material. Well, if you've got something interesting that you're doing, and in particular, if you've got something interesting that you're doing in combination with auxiliary and scouting, that can be a good story doesn't have to be long, 30 seconds, telling them where it is, when it is, why it is, who it is, and how it's gonna happen. That can be very valuable to you. And if you go to them and request that it be a public service announcement, you don't have to pay for it. Sometimes you can get radio stations to come out to your events and broadcast live from there. And the, the last in, in this slide is paid advertisements, which is something that we don't necessarily have the ability to do in most instances. Some may, and that's, that's something that you gotta leave up to local, uh, the local knowledge of the situation. All of these are going to be local in their um, connection to whatever station is delivering it. Uh, national stuff. We we supplied the the piece or the the spots that we did to national. I don't know that they've ever been used, but they exist. And that's the other thing is save them. Next slide, please. Television. How many of you? And I'm not. I I, I won't ask for answers, but just think about this. Do you have a news show? And do you have? a news show that's typically they're on at noon. And those are your local news shows that serve a lot of different purposes for the community, but it also serves as that public service component. And with a little pre-planning and getting to know the people at your local television station, you can often get a three to five minute spot on the typical noon show or a morning show it's that show that's kind of your community calendar, uh, you know, pet store or, you know, people with pets go on them, all kinds of different stuff. That's your, your typical community um, connections. 
is I guess the best way to put it. I, I would go at least once a year. I always saved what I wrote up to give. And the more you prep the local broadcaster, because you've got to realize in any of this media, these people don't have a lot of time. So if you can come in with five points, five questions for, for the um, host to ask you, and you email it to them before the show, you, you do a touch base with them uh, via email or, or with a phone call to say, you know, I'm going to be on your show tomorrow. Is there anything that you would like me to talk about? Or these are the things that I am looking at wanting to talk about. Can you see anything else? The other thing is there are other local news. If you're doing an event on the water, uh, just a quick example, we do a frostbite race and frostbite races are loved by television because they can send a cameraman down. They can you know, shoot 10 minutes of video, edit it down to a, a two or three minute spot. And it's, it's something that is, is gonna catch the eyes of their viewers. Uh, Event coverage. If you've got a major event, get a hold of your television station. Get a hold of a reporter. Cultivate a reporter or any number of reporters. But if you got a reporter who, A, is interested in auxiliary or the Sea Scouts, may have been a scout, get them involved. And, you know, you don't, you don't want to overdo it with them. But if you've got something, say, hey, listen, we're, we're doing a regatta. The auxiliary is going to provide safety and the Sea Scouts are going to be sailing in it. That might be something that they might want to come down and cover. It's a positive event that you get wide distribution on through television. Again, there's public service announcements and breaking news. If it's positive, great. If it's something that's negative, they're going to find it on their own. Um, and be ready for them if they do. Public affairs, get your public affairs people involved at whatever appropriate level that you have and know what you're doing if you step in front of a camera. Because at that point, a reporter can ask you any question that they want to. And the Coast Guard basically says, if you saw it and you know it, you can talk about it. My suggestion is you as quickly as possible refer it up the chain of leadership and management or up the chain in the Sea Scouts to the appropriate individual who can address it from a, a position of authority. Next slide, please. Word of mouth. Word of mouth can be tremendously helpful in your community. It also can be disastrous. How you control that is A, <laughs> don't have a disaster. B, be honest, whatever it is, but also know that, and I am a talker, so I have to always watch, and I've been in these situations, I have to watch what I say. Just be careful. The other thing is, is if you get asked a question you don't know the answer for, say, listen, I don't know the answer for that, but I'll get it for you which does two things. One, it can defer it till you can get a good complete answer and B, it can buy you some time. Typically, we all know what word of mouth, it's local, can be positive or negative. It is the least controllable of any of our interactions with our communities. And I don't care whether it's scuttlebutt within the flotilla or the ship, or it's something that's down on the street corner. You have very little control of it because it can spread like wildfire. And we have all been through rumor control on po positives and negatives. So just remember that word of mouth is something that is with you always. Somebody can be listening to what you say that you don't even know they are, and they can go somewhere and say it as if it were gospel. Often it is inaccurate. So my, my thought on, on word of mouth is be careful. The other is be honest always and be circumspect. Next slide, please. Ah, yes, the internet. And these are, if you see all this list, 
Um, it is just touching <laughs> the very tip of the iceberg. The internet is expanding, you know, those of us who got involved with it early on, it was pretty straightforward. And I remember when Facebook came and I've, I've been involved in Facebook now for 11 years. The Facebook of 11 years ago and the Facebook of today are two completely different worlds. Um, my son is a podcaster. He controls his messaging. But then once it's out there, it becomes part of the blogosphere. Skype is something that's basically a, a kind of a precursor to Zoom in a sense in that we could do that and basically family oriented. It was using a video camera, you know, in your computer and audio to basically see the other person's face while you're talking with them. I remember 50, 60 years ago at the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago, when they first started talking about television and phone calls and look at where we are now. 50 years sounds like a long time, but it can go really quick. And all the iterations along the way are things that you should become as familiar with as possible. And as you work in the internet, get as much good advice as possible. And an awful lot of that frankly, can come from our Sea Scouts because they're on it all the time. I have grandchildren, I have children who, if their phone is three feet away from them, it is a major tragedy in their life. And I think that's probably not unusual. You can see all the different things, uh, photos I put on, I do a thing on my personal page that I just call tonight's lights. And almost every day I take, take some photographs and I put them on my personal Facebook page. I now probably, and I don't know exactly the numbers, but I think I have probably a thousand people who look at them. And it's been built over time, which is another thing to talk about with the internet. There are some things that are instantaneous, but a presence is built over time. Whether it's your web page, a blog, podcast, any of the different things where you are talking to people, your audience gets built one viewer at a time, one lo login at a time. So don't, don't get impatient, but structure things so that it's welcoming and it draws people into you. It also is one that you want to Make sure you check on and see where your messages are being seen. And then you can also start looking around and seeing what isn't working. Look at the analytics. Facebook has some fairly decent analytics. Um, most of the web pages have analytics. Learn how to use them. Learn how to see how many clicks are going on certain things. And when something isn't working, don't use it or modify it. Look and see. One thing about web pages if you look at a web page, what you're seeing usually is the top half of the first page. You have about eight seconds. It's something that we, in, in training that I had, to get somebody's interest so that they will then click through to further pages. Now, if it's a, a website that is strictly informational, um, and in this, I'll talk about Oxby Wiki. One of the projects I want to get into is, I don't know how many of you are making use of Oxby Wiki. I was astounded when I first looked at it that there was that much information available. As a public affairs specialist, I had almost lived in the wilderness in that so much of what we worked with, we had to go you know, two or three or four different places to find. This is assembled. Now, the one thing about it is it's a lot of information on one page. And that's something that I think we want to talk about in that we start splitting some of that out and saying, look here. Because again, you have a short duration to where people either move on or lose interest. Once you capture them, 
then you then they will know where to look. But it's all about marketing where you want people to look and go. Photo shoots, again, I can't emphasize it enough. It is the one tool that we can use the most often is a photograph. It co conveys information and it is, now you gotta, you gotta understand that some of you can't, there are things you can't do with photos. And we can talk about that at length on in other, I mean, we could do one of these trainings on any one of these issues and spend an hour easily. Um, if you are a public affairs, uh, specialist for the Coast Guard and you've been through the sea school then you know that there are certain things editing wise you can't do. There are basics that you can do though that can help a photograph substantially one of which of course is cropping. Web brochures are something that you can assemble again with photographs and copy that can become very useful in a more uh, traditional setting and that somebody accesses that brochure and just because it's on the internet it's like they're they're moving the pages of an actual brochure and there are programs that do this very well video ads again facebook has them all the time i don't know that we have the financial ability nor do i know that we have the legal ability to use too much of of that type of advertising and again social media is everywhere if you want advice on how to um, make use of it, talk to your Sea Scouts. They know more than we do. They also go on platforms that we don't and probably shouldn't. Next slide, please. And here's just some social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Snap, Snapchat, Snapchat is one where that's that's one of those that is like word of mouth only worse in that it goes away, but it can be tremendously hurt, hurtful or tremendously negative in the time a comment lasts. I suggest that we stay away from Snapchat. Now, YouTube is a tool that frankly, I put at the center of what I do. I do a lot of different things on my own personal page. I do, I do music and I do storytelling. I record them with my iPhone and transfer them from that video that I can shoot with my iPhone to YouTube first, because then you can share out of YouTube and we're gonna be building our YouTube channel. And I welcome through Bruce and myself and others, if you've got a YouTube video, send it to us, we'll evaluate it to make sure that it's appropriate to our mission and it can become part of our YouTube channel. The, it's, it's tremendously shareable. It also is storable in a way that you don't have to store and that can be very handy because these are very data, data intensive. Uh, Twitter, I've, I've used Twitter uh, for 8th District. I don't use it much because Twitter has become the province of an awful lot of polit political dialogue and things can start bleeding over. Um, I don't know quite how to solve that because it's a tremendous tool, but it's a tool that again, once something gets out there, you have very little control over the messaging. Frankly, the same is true of Facebook. Any of these platforms, once it gets out there, it can come back to haunt you a year later, two years later. So be very, very careful when it's the auxiliary or Sea Scouts that what you put on is something that we always used the, um, the thought, it's something that your mama could see and she'd be proud of it. And actually that came out of trainings with the Virginia Tourism Corporation who I used to work with. Uh, make sure that what you put on social media is something that 10 years from now, you wouldn't mind having someone see because it's out there and it can be on any number of platforms by that time. 
The pitfalls are exactly that. We all get excited. I've had to pull stuff down that I saw and shared. It's real easy to hit that share button. Before you hit the share button, think about what the content is and whether that content is A, appropriate for our mission. Now, this is only in the context of what we do with auxiliary, aux scout, and sea scouts. Our personal pages are, are something different. And I have to, because my personal page um, does a lot of different things with a lot of different people in a lot of different um, applications. I've had a life where I've, I've worked in, in show business, I've worked in government, I've worked in a lot of different places. The problem is that the way you talk to one person may not be appropriate for the other. And occasionally I get myself on my personal page in trouble. Um, I, I also try and foster dialogue. Sometimes that dialogue can get, um, shall I say, a little heated on our auxiliary, Ox Scout and Sea Scout pages, I suggest that we stay as far away from that. We are not journalists in this application. We are public affairs and frankly, public relations people. Our message is that the auxiliary, Sea Scouts and the combination of, of the two in Ox Scout are positives and something that any young person and not so young person would enjoy being a part of. And that's frankly how I look at what we do. And the other thing is that's a positive me message and it's easy to get behind. And frankly, for all of us who are spending these thousands of hours working to keep these processes alive, frankly, and form something that we can be proud of for ourselves and our young people, um, we, want, we want to spread the good news is, I guess, the best way I can put it. So think about that whenever you're using social media because it is a double-edged sword. Next slide, please. Ah, yes, photography. Um, I'll start with the top on this list and that is know your basic Ox Scout, Scout photography policies with young people and this is this is you know do your paperwork uh, do the 70 70s it's and I'm, I'm praying I get this 7015 if not Bruce please correct me 7020 alpha 7020 alpha if you have a face of a young person under age person in the photograph, get the form. Talk to their parents and any people who are in supervisory positions. What I have a tendency to do is talk to them first and find out first, A, are, are the scouts comfortable with being photographed? B, will the parents or responsible parties sign the form? That said, an event where you're at some distance, one of the tricks I've tried to use is take the picture from behind the young person. Don't show their face. You can convey the same message that you're trying to convey with, the, frankly, the back of their head if they're doing something. If it's a group of people, the again, the more you can hide their faces, it's 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 important that we protect them. Those are the kinds of things that and and to be honest with you, often in my situation, I I don't get the opportunity because of where I live to do a lot with young people, and frankly, the auxiliary. I'm I'm always shooting an event where it's auxiliaries as we get more involved in um, events that are combinations of flotillas and ships, just be aware of that. Remember that, you know, your smartphone is the one camera you're going to have with you. Learn how to use it. 
You can do a remarkable amount. I hate to admit the fact that my camera, my SLR, rarely comes out of its case anymore. I, I do everything. I have an iPhone XS. I'm not advertising for it, but it's got a good camera. And cameras are becoming more and more a part of the saleability of smartphones. Get to know it. Learn the rule of thirds. Where do you put the feature? If the feature's a person, put them in the center of the photograph or just a little bit off center. If they're looking in a direction, have them looking, it's called look space, but have them looking in the direction and have more open field to where they're looking than behind them. If there's something sticking out of their head, ask them to move or you move. I've, I've seen uh, photographs of all trees sticking out of people's heads, um, those kinds of things. And you don't realize it unless you train yourself to look for it. Lighting. Outside is problematic in that you could get into bright light. Believe it or not, a slightly overcast day is a better day for shooting than a, a sky blue day. Uh, learn how to use lighting. Learn how to position yourself so that the light is behind you. Know the potential problems of lighting where backlight is. I see photos. We used to get photos at the Navigator Express all the time of people being taken in front of a window that was had sunlight and all you could see were black faces. And again, you get into the situation, you can only do so much with that kind of a photograph as far as what the auxiliary will allow you to do in modifying it just by pumping up the, the um, contrast or, or reducing the contrast so that the face can be seen. Just if you don't take the picture in that situation, you'll save yourself a lot of trouble. Um, as far as digital, those of you who have your kind of traditional single lens reflex uh, digital camera, remember one thing, you can always delete a photograph. It's not like the old days where you were burning film and it was expensive. I, I will do, there are a lot of events where I'll do 500 to 1000 shots. And I will get maybe 20 out of that that I even think are usable. But the rest, delete them or stick them in uh, an archive. Digital point and shoot cameras, if you're gonna do something out, like out on, on uh, vessels uh, and you, you don't wanna use your smartphone, get a relatively inexpensive digital point and shoot. And, and they're not real expensive, they're under a hundred bucks. Uh, you can hang it around your neck, stick it in, in your ODUs, wherever you, you know, it doesn't have to be a great big camera, but it'll get you photographs and then use it. Take the photographs. You can always throw them away. Um, again, you can, you can use them. I use photographs that are years old to illustrate a point. You don't use those in anything that is single event or timely, you don't insert a photograph in an event type uh, situation because that's not, it's, it wasn't taken at the event. But if it's something that's dressing up a brochure or it's dressing up a, a Facebook page or a web page, uh, they're perfectly usable. Save your photographs. I'll be honest with you, I have 47,000 photographs on my computer. It don't like it that much anymore. And then let's talk about uniforms. There's always that one individual who you line everyone up and then their hands are in their pockets. Can't use the photo. I have literally asked people to take their hands and don't be afraid to do this. If you're taking a group photo, look before you take the photograph because there'll be someone or someone staring off into space or, you know, you don't want people to feel like they were made to look uncomplimentary. So help them out. The other is if you're taking pictures of a number of individuals, say for headshots 
for ID cards or different things, line them up, have them ha carry their camera in their hand. If they want a photograph of it, you have your camera, have them in line. They step in front of the background. You take a picture of them with your camera. You take a picture of them with their camera so they can have the photograph and you go on to the next person. I did a lot of that in film work where I was taking pictures of other individuals and you could have a line, you have 20 people and it can go real quick because otherwise if you're trying to get people and, and gather them up that it can take too much time and people get bored or they start wandering off. Again, make sure you have the release forms done. Make sure that you have a copy of that release form and that that is transmitted, kind of follows the photograph so that we all know that this is a photograph that is usable and this is a photograph that, and if there is a parent that, that kind of is a little bit nervous about it, don't take the photograph because that kind of nervousness will be something that the person will remember. So just, you know, there are times to take photographs and not. My attitude is I, I, I if it ain't, if it, if, it, I, if it moves, shoot it. If it ain't moving, shoot it. You can always throw it away, especially now with digital. Uh, next slide, please. Video is becoming much more prevalent. And again, YouTube, you know, YouTube was at first something that frankly musicians used a lot of. Um, the MTV generation found that they could produce their own videos on YouTube. And to be honest with you, um, myself and my friends in the performing arts are surviving on YouTube right now. And it is, it is one of the few things that when we all went into shutdown and I don't know whether, you know, folks in, in the normal world, I guess I'll call it, uh, realize is that most performers and technicians and their support personnel have now not worked in eight months. That's my small pitch for supporting your local artists. But video through YouTube in particular has been a godsend. The other thing is video B-roll, which you can shoot with your camera. If you ever watch a shot on um, any kind of an event, particularly sports, but not necessarily, you'll watch, you know, they'll show the event and then they'll cut away to somebody in the crowd or they'll cut away to something else happening. And it's basically to take your eyes away if your eyes are on a video for too long, they start to almost glaze over. It's about two or three minutes. And in some situations, that's why when you shoot film, very rarely is there ever a shot that's longer than four minutes because that's A, how much film is in the canister, but B, they don't want your eye to get tired of looking at it. B-roll is something that if you say to a, a, a local television station, hey, listen, I've got some B-roll of, of Sea Scouts, or I've got some B-rolls of the auxiliary that I have on YouTube, they're starting to use it. Um, transferring video to YouTube and other platforms is something that is, is, once you get used to doing it, I can transfer something from my phone that I've taken with the video feature on my phone to YouTube while I'm watching television or while I'm doing something because it takes some time and it will upload. Having a good internet connection is, is important and an, and an internet connection that doesn't have a lot of dropouts or you'll, you'll, there'll be some frustration. But these are things that um, become an archive. Start your own YouTube channel. I have my own personal. Bill Smith YouTube channel. We're starting a YouTube channel with Ox Scout. And these are places that can become repositories. You can also move things. There is a surprising amount of video content on the auxiliary. I have not spent a lot of time 
yet um, exploring what's there for, for Sea Scout and my Sea Scout shipmates, don't be afraid to tell me that you've got something. Again, they're tools in the box. Um, I would be happy and I am sure that there are people who are much better at this than I out and probably on this call who can answer questions. Uh, don't be afraid to ask the question and you know it's the old saw but it's true. There is no dumb question. Some of this stuff is really, it's minutia and how you do it. It's a, a, a click in a certain way that will speed your process up and lower your frustration level. Talk to the people who know. And I'm saying at this point, I'm gonna break a bit for questions and answers. Um, and in fact, I think I'm looking at, at the time. Um, we're about halfway through the process, but I wanna open in the things I've talked about so far. And I've kind of run through this. It's a lot of information. I wanna open it up to questions and answers on any of the things we've talked about so far. Do I hear crickets? If you have a question, please feel free to unmute yourself. And Un it's good. Yeah, unmute yourself. And while you're doing that, I'm going to just switch over to the Hawk Scout um, uh, media page so you can see that. Maybe that'll get people thinking. Uh, Bill has mentioned about um, uh, YouTube now have an Ox Scout YouTube channel with 33 subscribers in the last week. We would love to encourage you to subscribe to it. And when you subscribe, I hit the bell as well and you'll be notified about new videos as they're available. The, um, the Sea Scouts also have a marketing page uh, that is very useful. If you haven't already had a look at it, it's uh, Oxford Wiki. One thing, uh, when when and this is this this is a personal picadillo, but it's also something that comes out of experience, and that is. Don't be afraid to leave some white, pay, white space on a page. If you look at what Bruce is showing, showing us all, there's a tremendous amount of information on this page. And it can be a little daunting to a first time user. There's you know all the different lists. Now, the one thing that it is the beauty of this, and I've said this to Bruce, Again, when I got involved with this, I had to start from ground zero. If you're gonna do the other, here's something I'm gonna throw into this. If you're going to do social media and marketing, learn it before you get too involved in it. And then as you go, continually open yourself up to new ideas and new techniques because it is not gonna stay static. The other thing is, is once you become the gatekeeper, then it is your responsibility, in my opinion, to make sure people understand how to have access. And if you have to take time to teach them, that's an article or um, a post in and of itself. Show people how to use these tools. We have a ton of tools available, as Bruce is showing us now. The thing is, if I'm looking at this and I look, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine different videos on that page. And if you started at the first one, about a day later, you'd get to number eight. So remember that, pull individual things that you want to use. Don't necessarily put them, this is kind of a storage area. But when you want to use them, share them to wherever you want to use them and put them by themselves. So that is what draws the focus. 
and, I, and we can talk about folks, I'll be talking a little bit about focus when we get to writing. Um, but if, as you can see, we've got the tools and there's been a tremendous amount of work put in to putting these together. The other thing is don't be afraid to add to it. If you've got a great idea, now some of the stuff, yeah, run it by us. Some stuff occasionally is, is, is something that's not gonna get used by us. So we can say to you, if you wanna use it in your own application, fine, but it's not, it's not ready for prime time. And there are, are things that, and I've had to do this with the Navigator Express and the Navigator. There are things that's like, uh, it's not quite ready to go national, but here's how we can make it be ready to go national. So, that's one of my jobs is if you've got something that you want help with, I can either help you myself or get you to someone who can. Because none of these things, we're all kind of in this uh, wilderness of opportunity. And we're learning, I mean, we're learning how to become video producers through YouTube. We're learning how to become photographers and by that i don't mean just you know uh taking family photographs but photographers by doing so and we're gonna make mistakes the fewer mistakes we make public the better bill we're just about at the top of the hour where i'd like to suggest i know you have more in this presentation um would you be willing to come back and um, amplify on any of the things that you've been talking about or talk about other uh, public affairs uh, recommendations for people? Anytime they want. And any of you, here is my, my email address is bill.smith at cgoxnet.us. I'm not going to give you my phone number, but email me and I'll send it to you. I'll work. I, I really enjoy at this stage of my, I've been doing this kind of stuff for an awful long time. I don't have all the answers, but I love doing it. And it's amazing um, how quick the time goes when you're doing one of these. So the answer is yes. Okay. So, uh, and if there was one message that Bill has said and you really need to take away with, with you, it is that we all have a responsibility for getting the word out. Bill is here to help you with that, but don't assume that Bill is going to do your job for you. He'll work with you to help you to be successful. So I would really like to thank Bill and for everybody uh, joining us this evening, this was a great presentation. Uh, we've recorded this and we'll be posting it on the Ox Scout Youth YouTube channel in the next few days. So thank you very much. And we will have another Ox Scout workshop probably in about four weeks uh, on a Sunday evening. So thanks everyone and good night.